Hello, here's a video about um, the design of a steel bolted connection to support both in and outer plane bending. Uh, it's going to be a uh, base plate to a column supporting a motorway signboard which is very heavy and subject to uh, wind loads and here's part of the model to help us. The base plate itself uh, supports a one, uh, 400 by 400 RHS or square hollow section. The bolts are arranged symmetrically which is handy because it keeps the amount of calculations to a minimum. Let's have a look at the way that the um, the loads are applied. So we have two ways in which the signboard supports out of plane bending. The first is when the the wind blows onto the uh, onto the signboard and it simply pushes it over. The second is simply the weight of the signboard itself pulling downwards, and that tends to to pull the sign over. Okay, so these are the two bending moments, one one way and one the other. Let's now think about some in-plane bending that's going to take place on the signboard. Uh, yeah, that's right, so in-plane bending. There's going to be shear forces in the bolt group when the bolt plate twists around. So when the wind blows onto the sign board, it tends to twist the, twist the whole thing around and that creates a uh, bending moment in the plane of the plate. However, that creates shear force. However, when the wind blows onto the entire structure, it tends to push it all in one direction and that creates a direct shear as well. So the same wind is doing both things at once, if that makes sense. Okay, let's get, let's, uh, let's have a look at the outer plane bending moments first. So I've drawn both of these bending moments onto my uh, sketch diagram and that's uh, so that, that tells me that with the overturning moment due to the wind I'll be getting compression in this flange and tension in these bolts with the overturning bending moment due to the self weight of the sign I'll get compression in this flange and tension in these bolts well the bolts furthest from the uh, point of rotation which will be in, along the center line of the two flanges in compression the bolts furthest from those points are going to be in greatest tension and so there's one bolt that seems to cop it uh, in both directions and that's this corner bolt so this corner bolt is going to be in greatest tension due to the overturning moment due to the, uh, the wind and with the overturning moment due to the self weight of the sign. So to find out what the tension is in that bolt, we have to we have to um, do an analysis for both cases. Uh, and to do that analysis, we need to find out the sum of the y squareds. That's the sum of the distances squared of each bolt, and the distances its distance from the centre line of the flange in compression, or you could put it better, uh, the point of rotation of the bolt group. So, here's the sign, all the bolts are 100 mil apart and they're set 50 mil off the face of uh, this RHS or SHS section, which is 16 mil thick. So, this first bolt here is 50 mil away. The distance to the centre line of the flange is 50 plus uh, 16 over 2, so that's 58. So, 58 mm. to the centre line of the flange. The next bolt therefore must be 42, 58 and 42 make 100. <coughs> so now I can set out all of these bolts distances from the centre line of this flange, assuming this is the flange in compression. First bolt is 42, second bolt add 100, 142, then it goes to 242, 342, 442. Okay, now I could do with working out what the sum of the y squareds is. Right. Well, the sum of the y squareds is simply going to be uh, around this flange 2 times 42 squared, 2 times 142 squared, 2 times 242 squared, 2 times 342 squared, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 442 squared. Add that lot up, 2 times all this lot, 6 times that lot, and it comes to just over one and a half million millimetres squared. Okay, so that's our sum of the y squareds. And then we're going to use, use the equation that the force in any particular bolt is my 
over the, some of the wires squirts. Great. Well, the bolt that we're interested in is going to be the one that's that's furthest from the uh, compression flange, furthest from the point of rotation. So that's going to have a distance of 442 millimeters. Okay. So I'm going to work out the bending moment due to due to the uh, self weight of the sign is 250 kilometers. And so the tension force in the bolt subject to the greatest tension due to that bending moment is my over sigma y squared. So it's 250 for the moment, 442 for the distance, and the sum of the y squareds, one and a half million. Now I've included a, um, a figure of 10 cubed in here because this bending moment is in the units of kilonewton meters. I like my answer to be in kilonewtons but everything else in this equation is in millimetres so I need to get this bending moment into kilonewton millimetres I've done that by multiplying it by a thousand because there's a thousand millimetres in a metre <coughs> okay that's good so I've worked out the force in the end bolts they're all the same the next bolt along I just simply use the distance 342 when I'm working out this bolt and here we go tension in that bolt is the bending moment times 342 all over the sum of the y squared 54.6 and go through all the bolts like this and work out the tension in the bolts and then if I add them all up that's going to give me the entire tensile force acting on the base plate so the tension in the base plate is 662 and uh, now if I resolve vertically that's going to give me the uh, compression force due to the rotation and so the compression force in the flange is exactly the same so I know the compression force in the base plate as well well that's one bend bending moment dealt with let's have a look at the next bending moment so that's the bending moment due to the self weight of the sign now we have to think about the bending moment due to the uh, wind on the sign okay Well, the sum of the y squared stays the same. All we've done is rotate round through 90 degrees. So instead of considering bending over that axis, we're just taking it over that axis. So the sum of the y squared and the y's are going to remain the same. So the bolt with the most tension this time is still 442 millimeters away. The only difference really is that the bending moment is 300 kilonewton meters and not 250. So let's work through that. The very first, first tensile force in the worst loaded bolt is 300. I multiplied it by 1000 to get the unit straight. It's 442 over the uh, sum of the y squareds. Great, that's 84.6. I can work through in the same way and get a total tension force in all the bolts added together. And that equates to the compression force in the flange. That's what I was interested in. Now it just so happens that I've worked out tension force in the same bolt twice. Uh, working with self weight to the sign, the tension force was 70.5. Bending due to the uh, wind on the sign, the tension force was 84.6. Simply add them together to get the maximum tension in that bolt at the bottom corner of the, uh, the base plate. Great. Well so much for outer plane bending, let's have a look at in plane bending now. Right, so we've got two types of bending. We've got this direct shear whereby the wind blows onto the uh, onto the sign and pushes it along. And then we've also got the rotational shear when the wind blows onto the sign and twists it around. Great. So here are the two shears. It doesn't really matter. Either way, the thing that we have to do is work out the polar moment inertia of the bolt group which is the sum of the x squareds and the y squareds around the centroid of the bolt group. Now the centroid of the bolt group, often as not, is really easy to find because it's just bang in the middle of the bolts. When they're arranged symmetrically around both axes, you simply draw a line between the corner bolts. Okay, but the question now is, which of these bolts is gonna be um, the one that's in, um, in maximum shear? So let's have a think about that. 
here are all the bolts running around the outside of my uh, plate and I've got some direct shear in each bolt and then as the plate twists around the shear in these bolts due to the rotation is going to be in this kind of direction intuitively I know that the bolts that are furthest from the point of rotation and are going to, are going to have the greatest forces so I'm homing in on the four corner bolts and of these I want to pick a corner bolt where the rotational shear is in a similar direction to the direct shear so I can pick either this fella or that fella take your pick it really doesn't matter and then the forces add together okay how am I going to do with, do with this well my centroid is here so I need to work out the sum of the x squareds well I'm taking x to run left to right across the connection so my first bolts are just 50 mil away from the center and these are 50 mil away I don't have to worry about pluses and minus because I'm squaring these things so I've got four bolts that are 50 mil away 50 squared I've got another four bolts that are 150 mil away 4 times 150 squared and then I've got these runs of bolts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 bolts that are 250 mil away along the x-axis to the centroid so add that lot together 850,000 when I think about the y direction the y-axis the bolts are arranged in exactly the same way so I'm just simply going to double that value. The sum of the y squared is exactly the same as the sum of the x squared. That's good. <laughs> I might save a bit of time. Add them both together. I've got 1,700,000 millimetres squared. So I'm taking my polar moment of inertia with the bolt group as that. Great. Let's get working out the uh, the bolt. I picked this corner one when I did my little, little sketch there. I had an idea that it was going to be either this one or that one we just decided to go for this one that's okay so I'm going to work out the X component and the Y component add them together with the direct shear component and the formula for rotation for instance in the Y direction would be the rotational moment times the X distance divided by the polar moment of inertia All right, let's have a look see how we get on with that So I'll start, start off looking at the x, force in the x direction. So the bending moment due to rotation is 400. Multiplied it by 1000 to get the unit straight. And it's the distance of the corner bolt in the x direction from the centroid is 250. But more importantly, the distance in the y direction is 250. So that's the dimension that I multiply it by. Divided by the polar moment of inertia, that's the force in the x direction. That's good. Okay. So I'll just draw that out. That's the force in the x direction. 58 kilonewtons. Let's work out. Oh, 58.8 actually. Okay. The force in the y direction is going to be the same, even though the same value, because the x distance to the centroid is the same. So I'll draw that out now, and in the y direction, I've got 58.8 kilonewtons again. But what about the direct shear? Well, the direct shear of 80 kilonewtons is simply shared out between all the bolts, and oh, there are 20 bolts in total, so the direct shear adds up to 4 kilonewtons. There you go, adding the direct shear of 4 kilonewtons, not very much. And now I can use Pythagoras to work out the resultant in that corner. So I simply add these two fellas together. That comes to 62.8. Square it, square it, square root the lot. 86 kilonewtons is the shear force acting on the corner bolt in the worst case. Great. Well, we've worked out the maximum tension and the maximum shear on our motorway uh, service sign. I hope you found that useful. Thanks.